everyone, and today we will be looking at exercise 8, performance climbing and descending. This exercise we will build on what we worked on last lesson. The aim of this exercise is to climb and descend in straight flight, but to achieve maximum performance and in different configurations. Let's first discuss things which may alter our rate of climb and descent. Our air speed. Our air speed will have a huge impact on both our rate of climb and descent. The aircraft weight, the heavier the aircraft is, the rate of climb will decrease. However, the rate of descent will increase. The use of flaps, as well as air temperature and density. For example, on a hot day when the air is less dense, the aerofoil will produce much less lift than on a cold day where the opposite will happen. Now, in a climb, there are two V speeds which we will look at other than our standard climb. These are known as VX and VY. VY is the airspeed which we can climb at and this speed will give us the greatest rate of climb. This means that over the course of a set time, you will climb higher than at any other given speed. VX is another airspeed, however, instead of giving us a good rate of climb, this allows us to climb at a much steeper angle. You wouldn't want to perform VX too close to the ground, as our airspeed will be much closer to our stool speed. However, VX can be used for avoidance, for example, climbing above cloud or a mountain. Now, let's look at these on a graph. What we will do is imagine that both of the arrows on the graph you will see will represent one minute of flight time. VX is at a much steeper angle. However, VY gets you higher in the time that we have. Now we will talk about glide descents. We have two types of glide descents which we will carry out other than the usual glide descent. These are known as our best glide and minimum sink. When we bring our airspeed down to our best glide speed, we will travel much further on idle power compared to other speeds. Minimum sink, however, is slightly different. When we reduce our airspeed to this value, we will descend much slower. However, this speed sacrifices the distance we can travel over the ground. Once again, let's look at this on a graph. And the arrows, once again, will represent one minute of flight time. Let's now look at how the flaps will affect the aircraft in a descent. Remember, we must only use the flaps within the white arc of the airspeed. Without any stage of flap being deployed, the aircraft will descend as usual. However, when we start adding flaps, the descent will get much steeper. Some aircraft may be fitted with spoilers or air brakes. An air brake is a part of an aircraft which produces drag, slowing the aircraft down. Whereas a spoiler not only produces drag, but it also spoils the lift generated by a lifting surface. The last part of this exercise, which we will talk about, is the side slip. We use a side slip primarily to descend very quickly. We will refer to the technique used to perform a side slip as cross controlling, and the reason for this is we will be putting in the opposite rudder to the aileron input. Firstly, let's get the aircraft into a glide descent. We will then ease in left or right aileron and at the same time we will feed in the opposite rudder. The aircraft will be completely out of balance, however we should still be travelling in a straight line. The rate of descent will rapidly increase. To take the aircraft out of a side slip, all you need to do is ease the stick back into the neutral position at the same time as reducing the rudder input. The key to doing this is by doing it very gently. A common mistake is to lower the nose as our airspeed indicator will display a lower airspeed in the side slip as opposed to normal flight. 
The danger of this is that you may exceed the flap speed if you are using flaps, which will be shown when you come out of your side slip. The reason for this is due to the pitot tube no longer being in line with the airflow, so watch out for that. We would usually talk about airmanship here, however, we will use the same points of airmanship as exercise 7, which are now shown on the screen. The next exercise we will look at is turning flight. Thank you for watching, please like this video and make sure to subscribe. Fly safe.